The movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masab, has cautioned politicians from the southeast not to waste their funds on the 2023 presidency, insisting that having a president of Nigeria from the region was impossible. It stated that the plot to ensure that no Igbo would ever assume the position of president began after the civil war. Alex. Rochaso Korocha, Ubunaya Ono, and Odumego Juku were listed as Igbos who had tried to secure the presidency, but it failed. Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Lomifo, Director, Public Affairs, Igbo Leadership Development Foundation, and Odozi Ngodozi Ohanezendibo, President of the FCT Chapter. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the program. You are welcome. Okay, I will start with you, Mr. Amifo. Masab is cautioning politicians from the South is not to waste their funds on the 2023 presidency and says a president from the region is impossible. We know that a socio-political advocacy group, uh, South East for President 2023 movement, recently planned a national dialogue on the matter. And then we also had in late 2019, Ohane Zendi Buyut uh, telling the world that they are consulting on the issue of Igbo presidency. What do you make of this missed signal? Is it really impossible for um, a president of this country to emerge from that region? Now, the statement credited to Maso, for me, is very unfortunate and does not reflect the realities on the ground. Um, Igbo leadership, uh, the foundation had a national conversation All right, we seem to be having uh, some uh, challenges with the network. We will get back to Mr. Mefo in a bit. But let's go to Mr. Ngodozie. Thank you very much. Um, did you get the question I put to uh, Mr. Mefo? Yeah, I got it. All right. Uh, can we have your reaction, please? Yeah, good evening, all. Um, uh, well, just, just like uh, Mr. Mefo said, you know, it's been monetized. The statements are credited to the movement for the transition for the sovereignty of Biafra. Mass of it's unfortunate. Why am I saying this? The evil people are part of the Nigerian state. Take away the people from the Nigerian state, the binding view of the Nigerian state is off. And then when you talk about the presidency of this country, it's override for the Igbo to produce the, the president of this country come 2023. However, there are certain indices that must that must come to play. What are these indices? The sincerity of Nigerians that are not Igbo to truly reconcile with the Igbo after the unfortunate affairs of the Biafran Civil War. You will agree with me that prior to the Civil War, the Igbo people were at the fore of activity, both in politics, in administration, in the economy of this nation. Unfortunately, at the end of the Civil War, there was a, there was a conspiracy against the Igbo people. A scotch act conspiracy to make sure that the Igbo man never gets to his... The, the civil war, sir, and to make was... Sure, and um, to make sure, um, sorry, um, let me come. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay. And also to make sure that the Igbo people does not get to the hem of prayer of this country. But I want to tell you something. The Igbo man doesn't, do this, doesn't come as the president of this country at a time like this. The unity of the country will be safe. Not because people will carry up arms, but because the heart of the people will be uh, you, seem the share, you, you seem to share the same uh, position with um, the national director of Masab, um, of information for Masab, Sunday Ukerafu. No, no, uh, because he is saying that um, a plot to ensure no Igbo become president began That's after it. the civil war. But m my yeah. question. Ma'am, sorry to interrupt, but what I would say is that 
some people are asserting that that comment is for someone still living in the past, that the Nigeria of today has evolved, and that there are chances for everyone who is a legitimate citizen. Now, can I, but then again, can is I, it? Can I help you now on that? Why am I not sharing the same ideas of him and Nigeria as it is today, the North Central, and quite a large number of the North Central people, and some people, and many of the South South, have come to the reality as the evil man should be allowed to go in and be the president of this country. That that will mark the true end of that. That will be the beginning of true reconciliation. However, some parts of this country don't believe that the evil man should be given the chance. So until that part that doesn't believe that the evil man should be the president come to the agreement as the evil people should be. The idea of the iPhone people, uh, mass of people, we play it off. All right. I mean, Let, let's... The evil man is truly reconciled with Nigeria. All right, let's Nigerian get to... Nigerian truly reconciled with the evil man, that's a different person. All right. Um, we still have uh, Dr. Lo Mefo. Um, Dr. Mefo, uh, can you um, speak on the issues? I mean, your reaction to uh, what um, Mr. Ngodozi has said so far. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I do not think that... Um, Nigeria as a country wouldn't uh, have an Igbo president or uh, a Nigerian uh, president of Igbo extraction as at now. I say so because less than 10 years after, after the Civil War, Dr. Alex Ekwemo, the blessed memory, became the vice president of Nigeria and the constitution, 1999 constitution that uh, the era operated had it that the vice president would succeed the president in any eventuality. So if the Southeast, the Igbos particularly, could produce a vice president less than 10 years after the Civil War, I don't see why they cannot produce the president of Nigeria 50 years after the Civil War. I think that... Um, the statement credit is um, exaggerated, you know, um, in terms of um, his full appreciation of uh, what is on ground. Some of them believe that this is an impossibility. It is not true. I am involved in uh, the process of trying to make this a reality. We have been part of um, the National Conversation, Igbo Leadership Development Foundation organized the national uh, conversation here in Abuja in March. It was well attended by all the regional leaders. We have consulted and we're still consulting. And um, the responses we are getting across the country from uh, the Southwest, South South, you know, Middle Belt, Far North, a it's lot seem to be riding uh, from what you were saying and from what Mr. Umadozi has been saying. A lot seems to be riding on the issue of Igbo presidency to maybe mute some of the pains of the civil war. Um, there is also the argument that uh, Igbo presidency will address uh, issues like IPOB and Masab, uh, that they will literally uh, fizzle out if we have an Igbo presidency. Uh, we've had such, you know, optimistic positions in the past, but the reality, it doesn't always seem to follow with the ideal, I mean, the thinking rather. So what, what do you... Is an Igbo presidency going to solve some of these problems? It certainly will. I'll tell you why. I have um, reached out to uh, a number of This network is uh, not being friendly uh, with us this evening. I will go back to Mr. Nwa Dozi. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put the same question to you. Will the Igbo presidency address issues like IPOB and Masab? Will they go away? Yeah, of course. 
the issue of evil presidency will solve a lot of problems. It will be the beginning of true reconciliation and reintegration. I mean, in fact, everything about reconstruction will come to an end if the issue of the evil presidency is addressed. As it stands today in Nigeria, we must agree that after 16 years of our independence, the Igbo man, which is the largest ethnic group in this country, have been the president of this country for just six months. Mind you, Azikiwe was not the president, it was just the ceremonial head of state. So if you think about reconciliation and reintegration of the evil in Nigeria and the final healing of the war, of the post-war post -war injury, the issue of the press, evil presidency will be in the wound. All right, um, let's, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to interject, but let's give um, Dr. Mefor some talk time because the program is almost wrapping up. Um, uh, Dr. Mefor, can you hear me? I can. The, I can the network has really been unfriendly, but I, I just want to ask you uh, this. The agitation for Igbo presidency, is it premised primarily on the issue of um, zoning, that the Igbos, since the zoning agreement, um, not formal, but the agreement um, that they've not had the opportunity to rule uh, in this country, why other zones have gotten that? Is that the only reason, or there is more to it? Well, I believe it has to do with uh, zoning as well as the need to unify the country. The president of Nigeria of Igbo extraction will certainly bring about healing. It will end the civil war. It will enable the whole uh, country to move together as one unit, one whole. And um, unless that is achieved, the Igbo man will continue to feel excluded from what is going on in the country. And this exclusion may not even be... It may, it may not be a matter of policy, but uh, what we are seeing is to that effect. So it will certainly heal. It will. Okay, I'm afraid that's uh, much we can take from uh, Dr. Law Mefo, uh, who is the coordinator of Ibobi Ibo Foundation, Ohanez Ndibo. He's been talking to us, I think, all the way from Abuja. We also um, have um, Mr. Odozi Ngodozi. Um, he is also the president of Ohanez Ndibo FCT chapter. I want to thank you very much for your time mm -hmm. and your contribution um, on the program. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take our plus reports now, and when we return, I'll be giving my take. Don't go away. It has been very interesting these few days in Nigeria's political scene as the government tries to probe and uncover alleged mismanagement of funds in the Niger Delta Development Commission. In a televised public hearing live broadcast, it was a verbal war between the House of Reps Committee and the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godswill Akbabio, where the latter accused the lawmakers of bullying him with their questions, leading to him making some grave allegations of receiving awards from the NDDC. It is important that people who have gone to court, people who genuinely did jobs, should be paid for their jobs. So for me, I'm not against it because uh, uh, who are even the greatest beneficiaries? It's you people now. Okay. Because if you look at your, your chairman, your chairman okay. gave... Okay, honorable minister. Honorable minister, that's okay. Before that's okay. Now, can of the I payment. ask you that question? That's, what is the benefit uh, that the National uh, Assembly is benefiting from? It's what okay, it's okay. Goma, uh, Goma are okay. you asking me? In response to the allegations, Speaker, House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Miller, threatened to sue the Niger Delta Minister, Godswilak Babu, if he fails to prove the NDDC awarded contracts to them. This is my fifth term here. I've never once collected anything from the National Assembly. And I know I speak for a great majority of members of this House. Great, great majority. And because of that, I will take this matter and this allegation and accusation very serious. 
And I will give the minister 24 to 48 hours. And clerk, I want you to back this up with a letter from this house. To give the minister 24 to 48 hours to publish the names, the contracts so given, the dates, because obviously these things will be documented. Unveil the companies of the 60% project that were given to members of the National Assembly. Failing which, failing which, failing which this house will bring the full wrath of the law. There are laws in our books. On Thursday, 23rd of July, the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, in a swift response, in a letter to the National Assembly, denied statements credited to him, accusing members of the National Assembly of being beneficiaries of about 60% of contracts awarded. But while under oath, as he answered questions from the investigative committee, this is what the Niger Delta Minister had to say. You just said... I just told you that we have record to show that most of the contracts in NDDC are given out to members of National Assembly, but no, you don't know about it. It's but okay. The That's okay. Do. It's okay. It. You, it's okay. The two, chairmen, okay. the two chairmen can explain to you. That is why I was no, a member. No, 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 I was a member of the that NDDC you. committee. It's I okay. Know what it's going okay. On. You were a member of the NDDC and not of... Uh, wait, you were a member of the NDDC in the 8th Assembly. Yes. And are you telling me that lots of drugs were awarded to you as a no, member? No, this is a problem. That's why I said you then must you change. have the right to accuse people. Then you why can't you bring, it, can bring you, up can the you people that... To me? One of the chairmen if you were not awarded a contract, then why are you coming here that you are aware that you were a member of the NDDC and lots of contracts were awarded to this? You I, said I'm not, I'm not aware. I'm telling may, you may that I, bring may, up those names. May I inform my honourable sister that that is why we have uh, to change the rules of Honourable Honourable Minister, please. It's okay. That is okay. That is okay. But let me explain. No, it's okay. As it stands, Nigerians are eager to know what the truth really is concerning these allegations. And if found to be false, will the Niger Delta minister be punished for committing perjury, or will it just pass as mere theatrics? The proponents of rotational presidency argue that the concept should ensure a sense of belonging among Nigeria's divided ethnic groups. Of the three major tribes, however, the House of Fulani, the Igbos and the Yorubas, only the Igbos are yet to lead in the exalted position in a democratic setting. That said, I personally do not hold any faith whatsoever in the alleged unwritten rotational presidency agreement. It simply isn't working. What is fact, though, is that every zone seems to have interest in producing the president. Every group is in a fight for relevance, and that should be a fair expectation in a democracy. But for the quest to amount to anything, there must be unity of purpose. Instead of these sectorial permutations, I would rather a shift that many say is a bit naive, a shift in ideology and the way politics is played. One that focuses on the antecedents of individual candidates, irrespective of region. We should make a shift from career politicians whose only goal is self-enrichment. The Igbos, like every other group, has a right to aspire for the exalted position, but will they be able to work with a unity of purpose? Will they ever get there? Only time will tell us. For now, it's time to wrap things up. It is always a pleasure to know that you're watching. I want to say thank you for your time. And until I see you again, be well.